and welcome to Health Focus, a production of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. I am Fennel Neptune. Today we have with us the Environmental Health Officer for Vector Control, Glenda Etienne Sipal, who will provide us with some information on mosquitoes and mosquito control. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Fennel. Yes. Great. Mosquitoes are something that um, affect a lot of us in St. Lucia. Can you perhaps tell us um, what Tell us a little more about mosquitoes and how does it affect humans? Mosquitoes are tiny flying insects with the ability to transmit diseases to humans and animals. We have, there are so many different species of mosquitoes in the world. The only place in the world that we don't find mosquitoes is in Antarctica. Um, those that are of public health importance right here in St. Lucia, the Aedes aegypti mosquito, the Culex mosquito and the Anopheles mosquito. Okay, great. And um, why is it necessary for us to actually get rid of those mosquitoes? M mosquitoes are what we call domesticated, um, that meaning that they prefer to live around humans and animals. Um, the reason that they want to live around us is because they, need, they depend on our blood to fertilize the eggs. Um, so they will breed or lay in egg in containers around your home so that they can get a blood meal when they're ready. Okay. And you mentioned that mosquitoes actually um, lay their eggs in containers. Um, if you could elaborate a little more in terms of places that um, the mosquitoes actually lay their eggs besides containers. So <clears throat> what we've noticed at our office, when our officers do surveillance, we see a lot of drums. People tend to store water um, because of maybe the location, um, the way that um, their terrain is and they're not able to get access to water so people tend to store water so we see a lot of drums being a source of mosquito breeding we see tires being a source of mosquito breeding garbage the way we dispose of our garbage as long as water can collect mosquito will lay in as little as a bottle cap full of water so as long as water can collect in any container and that water is standing mosquitoes will lay their eggs in those in those sources and with all of that being said, um, how can we actually prevent um, this mosquito breeding? How can persons in the community actually help to prevent the mosquito breeding? Mosquito control is everybody's responsibility. Because if I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing and you're not doing, supposed to be, not, supposed, not doing what you're supposed to be doing, um, the mosquitoes will not just remain at my home. Mm -hmm. It will be our problem. So in order for us to effectively get rid of mosquitoes, everybody has to come together. It's simple, get rid of standing water. If we have no standing water, the mosquito population will reduce. So um, people just need to come together, get rid of anything that has standing water. You properly cover your drums. Once upon a time, people used to cover their drums with um, cloth. Mm -hmm. But what you would realize is after it rains or that cloth gets wet, it would sink to the bottom and water would flood on top of the, the cloth or whatever they're using. So what we're asking is for people to use um, a tighter fitting material. What we recommend is people could use mesh, mm -hmm. mesh with tiny holes um, so that the mosquitoes won't get access to it. Your, your buckets, you properly cover your buckets. Um, garbage, for example, coconut husk. Um, your roof gutters, for example. People neglect their roof gutters, especially because of how high it is on their homes. But what we would say is at least every, at least once a month, Mm -hmm. check your roof gutters and something that will give you an indication that your roof gutters are breeding is that there, there isn't a free flow of water coming down the downspout mm -hmm. so that you, ha you have an indication that you may need to clear your roof gutters so just um, a seven minute seven minutes at least you take a walk around your home inspect your property and anything that has standing water you dispose of it oh, great. and for some persons they might say okay I'm doing all of those things around in my surroundings but I'm still getting mosquitoes and it might be the neighbor. What advice would you give them? You can ask your neighbor. We know that we're, we live in a culture where um, people may not be approachable, mm -hmm. but you can speak to the neighbor and let them know what is affecting you. Mm -hmm. If you may have issues with that, you can always speak with somebody at Environmental Health and we could come and assist you with that um, issue that you may be having with your neighbor. Great. And, um, for instance, somebody might have a lot of mosquitoes around in their surroundings. How can that person actually um, prevent getting mosquito bites? T 
to get to prevent yourself from getting mosquito bites is easy either you use repellents or you cover cover up yourself you must you must ensure that you wear light light covering mm -hmm. because mosquitoes are attracted to dark colors but what we say let's prevent the problem before it starts so you clean up you get rid of the clutter mosquitoes hiding um in dark places so you open up you clean up the, the clutter to prevent the mosquitoes from mm -hmm. coming in you prevent the mosquitoes from breeding in the first place but if it's a situation where you do have mosquitoes you can cover up you can wear your repellent to prevent the mosquitoes from biting wonderful while we are due for a break we will be back in a moment I am Dr. Gemma Sherry and I am here to give some tips to help you with the proper use of your homemade mask. Face masks help reduce the spread of infectious diseases. When wearing a mask and using it as recommended, you are at less risk of contracting or spreading viruses. When wearing a mask, ensure that it is clean. Wearing a mask that has been washed reduces your chances of being exposed to infection. Wash or sanitize your hands before putting on your mask and before removing your mask as well as after taking it off. Do not share your mask with others. Your mask should not be taken away from your face and given to others for their use. This contributes to possible spread of infections. Place your used cloth mask into a resealable bag if you do not plan to wash it right away. This prevents spreading any virus to other objects or surfaces. Wash cloth masks with soap and water and put to dry in sunlight, allowing it to dry thoroughly. Face masks should not be placed on young children under two years of age, anyone who has trouble breathing or is unconscious or otherwise unable to remove the mask without assistance. So bear in mind that masks are effective in preventing viruses from spreading, but they are only one tool in preventing and controlling infections. So remember to daily practice the required hand hygiene, cough and sneeze etiquette and physical distancing. These actions in combination make a big difference in reducing infections. Welcome back. We will continue our discussion with Glenda Etienne Sipal on mosquitoes and mosquito control. Okay, before we took the break, we were talking in terms of how to prevent mosquito bites. And one of the, um, we know of course mosquitoes carry viruses. And one of the common um, mosquitoes is the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Can you tell us one of the common um, viruses carried by that mosquito? Um, we have uh, the, the Aedes aegypti mosquito. She's responsible for transmitting a few diseases. The one that is common in Saint Lucia is the is dengue fever mm -hmm. that we we all know about. Um, dengue fever will exhibit symptoms like the flu. You may, be, you may get dengue fever and you may not even know that you have dengue fever because you may have a headache, you may get a headache, you may um, be vomiting, mm -hmm. you may have eye pain, you may have a fever, but you may think that you may be getting the flu. The only way that you, you can tell that you have dengue fever is if you visit a doctor. They would run a test and they would tell you that whether you just, it's just the flu or you have dengue fever. Okay, so I'm guessing if somebody has a lot of mosquitoes around and they have those symptoms, it would be advisable that they visit a doctor. Yes, and even when you get, um, and if, uh, if you're not sure that you mm -hmm. have dengue fever, it is wise that you protect yourselves. For example, you sleep under a, a, a mosquito net because the thing about the mosquito is that the mosquito will enter your home mm -hmm. and infect, bite you get the virus from you and infect the rest of your family members so it is wise that you protect yourself especially if you're not sure that you have dengue fever okay and how can a person actually cure from dengue um we currently don't have a virus from dengue fever if you go to the doctor the, what will happen is that the doctor will treat your signs and symptoms mm -hmm. um if you're vomiting, they may give you something to suppress that. If you have a headache, they will give you painkillers. If you have dengue fever, they will recommend taking rest, taking in fluids, and they will recommend Panadols. We must remember that we should not be taking anything like Tylenol, um, ibuprofen, uh, not ibuprofen, 
um, anything that would cause you to bleed, something we call blood thinners, we should, okay. we must make sure that we don't take these because it would cause you to bleed. It could cause you to bleed okay. out. So that would be something like aspirin. Yes, like aspirin. Yes. Okay, great. And we spoke in terms of um, dengue, but a lot of persons might say, okay, yes, we're playing our part in the community, but what exactly is Ministry of Health doing? What is the Environmental Health Division actually doing to prevent and treat mosquitoes? Every day, our officers go out. We do what we call entomological surveillance. That is just going to people's homes and conducting surveillance, actively looking for breeding, breeding grounds of mosquitoes so that we can destroy them. We, while we're out on the field, we educate the public to, as, so, so that we give them some kind of responsibility. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we, can on, we only do a cycle once for a year. When I say a cycle, we can only visit a community sometimes one for, once for a year. And so, during the time that we have not visited your home, the onus is on you. Mm -hmm. you t it takes, like I said earlier, it takes about seven minutes to just do a walk around your home, look for what is breeding and get rid of it. Okay, so you'll visit different communities. Different communities. And some people may call us and say, um, oh, but we have so many mosquitoes and we have not seen a, an officer. But sometimes your, your turn has already passed mm -hmm. and we're moving on. Great. And you said it's the onus is on us meaning persons in the community also have a part to play. Can you um, elaborate a little more in terms of the community members playing a part in actually stopping the breeding of mosquitoes? Again, earlier I said, I mentioned that um, if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and you, the neighbor, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, the mosquitoes will not stay on one, one person's property. Yeah. The mosquitoes will, will be flying within that community. So at the end of the day, what we need to do is just turn over your container cover your container if you're not using the water get rid of the water if you if you plan to use it cover it properly so that the mosquitoes don't get access to it and in that way we don't have a um, mosquitoes breeding in that community great and you have persons who have farms um, how would you say um, they could actually reduce um, the mosquito risk on the farm it, the, the same principle applies you go, you on, on the farm, sometimes the farmers would have their, their drums carry, um, holding water just in case maybe for them to wash their fruits and whatnot. Um, it's just the same thing applies. You walk on the farm, you cover your drums, you keep your drums covered. Some farmers don't go on the farm every day, but when you do, um, that's when you would be accessing the water. So we're just saying the same thing applies anywhere on the farm that has something holding water, you get rid of it. Okay. And what final message would you like to leave for St. Lucian's? The mosquito control is our responsibility. Um, it doesn't take much for you to walk around your home and get rid of what is causing the problem. If you prevent mosquitoes from breeding, we, the likelihood is that you won't get dengue fever. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. No problem. Well, that's how we come to the end of Health Focus. On behalf of the entire production team, thanks for watching. Until next time.